Chapter 8. How to Treat Yourself If all treatment is self-treatment, and if the only one to be convinced is the one making the statements, the only difference between treating oneself and treating another person is the direction in which the treatment is pointed. Instead of addressing others, we now address ourselves and we talk to ourselves until we are convinced of the truth of what we say. What is this self with whom we talk? It is the great subconscious mind that connects us with God and with all supply. It is a larger part of every man, the guarantee of freedom and of power and fulfillment of every right desire. In fact, there is nothing that it cannot do and nothing that it cannot accomplish when the necessary condition has been fulfilled. So what is this condition? To trust the law to complete itself, that is, to shift all responsibility to it. Jesus said, The things I do, I do not of myself. The Father within, he doeth the work. Just as the momentum of a snowball is determined by size that it attains, the effectiveness of our word is determined by the measure of our trust. If we impress our treatment upon the subconscious mind with sufficient intensity, faith, and vigor, if we register our claims with sufficient emphasis and trust, and if we do our utmost to actualize our claim, there is nothing in the world that can oppose them or stand in the way of their success. The treatment will gather to itself everything necessary to complete itself. Limp, half-hearted thinking, on the other hand, means limp execution. Little or no change occurs in the condition. We are seeking to correct when there is only a slight impression made upon the creative mind. The force of registration must not be construed as personal effort or willpower. It is a concomitant of the absolute conviction that it is God who is doing the work. Self-treatment is nothing more than telling the subconscious mind what we want done. Turn your thoughts inward, relaxing from head to foot. Imagine that you see your other self standing before you. Call him by your name and talk to him something after this fashion. Harry, or whatever your name is, you are going to listen, act upon, and embody my every word that I speak. Here are my directions. Tonight, while I am asleep, I want you to quicken my realization that God, the good, is the only power operating in my life. Let this idea fill my consciousness so completely that it animates everything in my experience. Let every good I have ever known be increased. Help me to see only the good. Expect only the good, accept only the good, and express only the good. And as I go forth to meet my good, may I go forth to share my good. Analysis of Self-Treatment The thing that makes self-treatment effective is the spirit or power that you put into it. In talking yourself out of evil or into good, you must speak your word with authority. That is, speak as one who knows and knows that he knows. You must be so convinced that your word is power, as you release it into the creative activity of the subconscious mind, that there is no suggestion of doubt or compromise in your thought. You do not have to put mental or physical force into the word, but you must be sure of yourself and sure of what you are doing. You must have faith in your authority. You must speak your word, give your treatment, with the quiet conviction that it will accomplish that whereunto it is sent, and will return from its operation in the great subconscious mind laden with good. But the first step in self-treatment is the preparation or conditioning of the subconscious mind to receive and to retain the idea projected into it. This is necessary in order that the consciousness and subconscious minds can move in the same direction toward the same end. If the inner mind denies what the outer mind decrees or affirms, the unity of action is destroyed. It is imperative, therefore, that every contradictory and false belief be analyzed and talked out of the mentality before the treatment is given. If we neglect this step, we are trying to walk in two directions at the same time. The reason you can talk your inner self out of any unwanted thing is that your subconscious mind reasons deductively. It has no other purpose than to obey your word. It acts by reacting. It responds by corresponding. When this mind has been cleansed of conflicting thoughts, you have absolute dominion over it. It cannot talk back nor choose a line of thinking contrary to your own. It cannot deny or refuse what you ask. What the intellect decrees, the subconscious must obey. What will you do then when you find a contradiction or denial neutralizing your conscious thought? Continue treating, praying through your mind, until your conscious thought believes and your subconscious mind no longer denies. That is, until the conscious and subconscious minds are unified or integrated. If you are going to objectify a desirable experience, you must have both a conscious and a subconscious realization of that experience in the mind. The action and reaction to your word must be balanced. Since it is the subconscious state of your thought that reacts, the conscious mind must be trained to choose wisely what the creative power is to respond to. Two Methods of Self-Treatment 
In talking yourself out of the thing you wish to expel from your experience, you should use your formulas not less than three times a day. In the morning before breakfast, at noon before lunch, and at night before you retire, you must be positive in your declaration. You must believe every word that you speak, and you must have absolute faith in your ability to live up to the claim you are making. Often we address the outer self with a conscious mind and put things right up to ourselves as an adult might talk to a child, an employer to an employee, or one comrade to another, depending on our individual type and on the situation. This is merely surface treatment. It is all right as far as it goes, but it doesn't go far enough. Here's an example. Now, John Doe, calling yourself by name, or now, young man, there is something wrong with you and you know it. You are failing because you are only partly alive. You have lost track of your divinity, and the good things of life are passing you by. The trouble with you is that you are not demanding enough of yourself. Your resolutions are weak, and your expectations are small. You must do something about this right away. You must think and live to some purpose. You must bring out the best in yourself and put it to work. If you will study this method, you will see that the thing that is lacking here is spiritual therapy and power. Jesus said, The natural man receiveth not the things of God. The conscious mind, unaided by the subconscious, is helpless to execute its commands. In the more powerful form of treatment, you think deeply and penetratingly into the subconscious mind. Then you say something like this, Subconscious mind of me, I need your help right now. I know that you can and will give it to me. Right this minute you are working for me. Make me conscious of God's presence as the great accomplishing power in my life. Give me both the qualities to triumph over the difficulties in my path and the power to develop these qualities. Make me master over myself and over every situation in my experience. Keep me in touch with God power so that nothing but good can get into my life. Another example of self-treatment. Letting God speak through you is the highest form of prayer. The right way to get what you want from the universe is to get it through yourself. Have you ever put your claims right up to your subconscious self and talked to it just as you would talk to a partner or an assistant from whom you expected immediate action? When you are confronted with an insoluble problem, just address your subconscious self and say, Subconscious mind of me, I am calling on you in this situation because I know that you are in touch with all wisdom, understanding, and power. I know, too, that you are one and only desires to help me in my needs. You know what this problem is, and you know that there is a perfect solution to it. You have access to all the intelligence there is, and that is why I am commanding you to register the correct solution in and through me now. It is imperative and urgent that I have this information at once. That is why I am calling on you. I know that you cannot fail. Then set your treatment in motion in some words such as this. The solution to this problem is now known in mind, and is now known in my mind. My mind is conscious of the solution, and is conscious of its ability to solve this problem. To that mind in which I have my being, there is no problem since the solution is already known. I await this answer with absolute and unqualified certainty. In this type of treatment, you must be certain that your claims are spiritually legal, that is, that they are in accord with the will and purpose of God. You are dealing with law and must not ask for things that are unlawful or harmful to yourself or others. If the commanding type of treatment troubles you or seems sacrilegious, remember that it is authorized in the scriptures. Concerning the work of my hand, command ye me. Do not then beg or beseech God for what you already have, but recognize, affirm, and claim it. Make your claim so strong and press it so hard that there cannot be any doubt as to the nature of the response. Command ye me. Be bold, be sure, be definite, be deliberate, be determined. Be persistent. Know what you want and know that it is in accordance to the will and purpose of God. Then claim it as your own. Sink or swim treatment. I create new heavens and a new earth. The former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. Wind percussions, fluoroscopes, stethoscopes, x-rays, blood counts, and basal metabolism tests all tell you that same story and the doctor says that nothing can be done. Jesus said, leave all and follow me. Leave the diagnosis, forget the prognosis, drop the calamity, dismiss the ultimatum, turn away from the fear and jump off the deep end of the relative into the absolute. Your extremity is now God's opportunity. What man could not do for you on the material plane, God will now do for you on the spiritual. This is the great climax in your life, the way you'll meet and determine the outcome of your trouble. With a dense sentence hanging over you, you can no longer look to material means for help, but must center your whole thought and faith in God. Your vision must now be one-pointed and your loyalty undivided. It is now sink or swim, die or live. When you come to this place, the whole universe is back of you. 
working out a miracle in your life. The diseased body will now be absorbed into the power of God, and the old beliefs will now fade away like shadows before the dawn. But where are you going when you follow him? You are going from a physical thing called disease into a spiritual thing called perfection. You are going into a new height of dimension of consciousness where the former things shall not be remembered nor come into mind. Deep End Treatment in Time of Despair I know that all of the life of the universe streams through my body at this moment. I know that mind knows nothing of such things as incurable conditions. I know that the only thing that hinders my complete restoration right now is my own blindness to faith. From this moment I affirm my oneness with the divine perfection. I drop my belief in the actuality of disease and affirm my faith in the perfect presence within. I do not have to call to a far distant God who sits in the heaven. The God of the universe is within me now. He has been there all my night life, never forcing himself upon me, but momentarily awaiting my recognition. All my life I have been blind, but now my eyes are open to the truth, and the truth sets me free from the law of sin and death. At this moment I dwell upon the fact that this great creative law of mind awaits my word. I speak my word for the manifestation in me of all the spirit is in itself. I give thanks for my uncovered perfection, and I release myself lock, stock, and barrel, diagnosis, prognosis, and feeling to the creative activity of mind. Ways to Speed Your Recovery True religion and medicine, says Dr. J. M. Finnery, should go hand in hand as complementary forces. True religion is the practical application of the principles of truth. It deepens faith, renews the body, spiritualizes the mind, expands the consciousness, releases power and bears fruit in all good works. It is the life of God and the soul of man. Let us keep our mental levels high by removing all the thought barriers to our good and by looking ever unto God, who forgiveth all our inequities, who healeth all our disease. Seven ways to speed your recovery. 1. Remove all limitations by casting from your mind every adverse thought or belief which would oppose your healing. Keep your entire thought centered in wholeness. Life is God. Know that it cannot be limited or bound in any way. 2. Control your imagination by refusing to allow it to play upon negative images, appearances, or the careless suggestion of others. 3. Sublimate your fear emotions by identifying yourself with the love of God. Replace the negative emotions with those so strongly positive that the negatives are literally destroyed. 4. Keep yourself relaxed by giving up all thoughts of tension and by dwelling upon the peaceful presence of God. Know that God is powerful enough to cope with any situation in your body. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. 5. Keep yourself receptive toward God by giving Him all the power in your life and by centering your thought in the Christ presence, which is untouched by sickness, disease, or contagion of any kind. 6. Place yourself, your body, and all your affairs lovingly in God's hand. The light of God surrounds me. The love of God enfolds me. The power of God protects me. The presence of God watches over me. Wherever I am, God is. 7. Transmute your pain by knowing that your body is purely spiritual substance and every cell in that spirit is present in the very place where the manifestation of pain is trying to make itself felt. Prayer for a Hospital Heavenly Father, I thank Thee for this house of healing, for it is a sign that Thy render mercy. Bless the doctors, nurses, and all who serve here. Grant them wisdom, skill, and patience as they wait upon the suffering children. Reward them with knowing that their work is holy for they labor together with thee. Raise up friends for this place, that in work may be maintained by thy glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.